I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty one Jeep Grand Cherokee L Overland without launch control. Interesting, kind of slow, kind of torquey off the line though. Horsepower and torque 290 horsepower, 257 pound feet of torque from a 3.6 liter V6. So what is a Jeep Grand Cherokee L? It's the three row version of the Jeep Grand Cherokee. And the Jeep Grand Cherokee is also what the Trackhawk is, right? Yes. So the, both of them exist at the same time, but this one is different. Correct. If you're shopping for a Jeep Grand Cherokee in the United States, visit the True Car link below to get discounted price offers from local dealers. So this is all new and they haven't ever had a three row Jeep Grand Cherokee before, so we should probably start with the looks. Yeah, so it does look a little bit different than the regular Grand Cherokee. I feel like it kind of has like an overbite in the front. It looks like a big square smile. Yes, with braces. Yes, <laughs> but I, I overall think it looks pretty cool. Um, in white, it looks a lot more tuner car with a lot more grill, but in this burgundy, it kind of blends in nicely. Yeah, and it also even looks more luxurious in white. I don't really like this color. So the headlights, they're just lines that go across, but they do look pretty good. Yeah, nothing special, but I think the regular Jeep Grand Cherokee has actually way better headlights. They just look so cool. And then we do have an older style Jeep grill along the front. And in that grill, there's actually a little sensor, which is very cool that we have that because this thing has night vision. And you can use it during the day in your gauge cluster and we pretty much just see exhaust tips lit up. Yeah, all we've been doing is using it like exclusively because you can use it during the day and all you see is the heat signatures from the exhaust and like from brakes and stuff. You are a predator. <laughs> It's really cool. Yeah, really distracting though. Oh yeah, but I, I love it. Because on other cars, I'm pretty sure it's blocked out until it's nighttime, like the Porsche Cayenne, I think even the Cadillac as well, the Escalade. Okay, but the dumb thing is, so say you're driving with uh, cruise with night vision, right? Yep. In cruise control. Yep. If you hit the brakes when you see something to avoid it, say it's like a, a deer, then the gauge cluster pops up and it'll get rid of your night vision. Yeah, we have some nitpicks with this gauge cluster. In the cruise control. Yes. Side view. Uh, looks pretty good. Again, nothing too special, but there is a chrome swoop that you pointed out that looks cool. Yeah, it goes all the way from the top along the back and all the way up to the top on the other side again. And I think these wheels actually look really nice as well. I'm going to go with like pretty average. It's good for the Overland model. And what is a Continental recommended tire for the Jeep Grand Cherokee L? The Terrain Contact HT. Okay, and then along with the body lines, we've got a really nice crisp line that goes all the way across. And where our badge is, we've got an American flag there too. Yeah. America. And then uh, the American flag is opposite on the passenger side because you always want it like waving the direction of the wind that you'd be going. It's not retreating. Yeah, that's like when we had the uh, police officer uniforms and they're like, that American flag's on the wrong side and we're like, these yeah. are stripper costumes. It, it said <laughs> officer naughty. <laughs> yeah. And moving around to the back, the taillights are pretty decent, nice LEDs. Yeah, nice little a good line, but it's nothing that's like very classic like a lot of the other Jeeps and Dodges. Right, it's not like the Macho Man Randy Savage kind of thing yeah just like solidly good and then we've got real exhaust tips 2021 reel down there at the bottom yes yeah, so you can see the real tip inside the fake tip and what does it sound like from the outside <laughs> Not very good. And what does it sound like from the inside, Yuri? Kind of droney. Sounds faster than it is. <laughs> yeah, it does not move very quickly. So looks wise, would you take this over a Durango because they are both technically three rows? Uh, I'd actually have to go with the Durango SRT Hellcat thing, whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does look really good. But then they are also coming out with the Jeep Wagoneer, which I think is also a three row. Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer. The Grand Wagoneer will be the three row. Yeah, there's like a lot of weird overlap, but it is cool, I guess, that they're doing stuff and it is a cool alternative to a minivan, which we're also reviewing this week, which actually has a whole bunch of similarities. So if you want the extra room for everyone, but you don't want an SUV, be sure to watch that review when it comes out. Yes, Chrysler Pinnacle Edition or whatever, Chrysler Pacifica Pinnacle Edition, all-wheel drive. So now moving on to the interior, let's continue on with the gauges and the radar cruise control stuff. Okay, so the quick nitpicks that we have, the gauges are really customizable, which is really nice. You can have a couple different modes. However, if you have it into the big bubble mode, no matter what you do, if you have the smallest warning, if your cruise speed changes, if you press the gas, if you turn on something, then it actually moves the bubbles to the side. Yeah, it's 
pretty annoying, like a huge oversight, I think, in the design. It's very distracting as well, because yeah, they're constantly moving. So if you're in full radar cruise and then you tap the brakes, it'll ta it'll change to be like, cruise control has been reset. And it's like, if you're using the night vision and you do that, then you can't see the night vision. You can't see the thing you're trying to avoid. Right. But the radar cruise is the good kind of radar cruise, like the Alfa Romeo and the Maserati. Yeah, so you only have to touch your fingers to the steering wheel or even your legs. But I did have a little incident where it tried to accelerate me into the truck in front of me and I had to slam the brakes. So that was a little sketchy, it only happened once. So like every radar cruise control system, Keep your eyes on the road. Yes, no matter the manufacturer, always. Always. <laughs> so wow. moving on to this infotainment, a couple little nitpicks here. It is pretty fluid for the most part. Well, it is new. Yes, it is Uconnect 5, which is the first implementation of it in a Jeep vehicle. And it's also in the Chrysler Pacifica minivan. Right. So we do have wireless and wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is really nice. Uh, we do have satellite radio. However, using the actual tuning knob, thank you for having a hard button, there's some lag between switching between stations and stuff. Pretty much when you do your first turn, it goes to a new screen and it takes forever. Like, guys, you don't need to go to that new screen. Everyone's doing that in satellite radio. Exactly. Stop it. Yeah, Ford's doing it, GM's doing it. Like, everybody's doing that. Stop! So the next issue, again, a little nitpick, is that the massages, because yes, we have massages, so thank you again, because that's awesome. To turn them on, you don't actually press the buttons that you want to be the massage, you actually have to press the on button first. It's like, it's a little user error input that you're like, come on. Or you push the massage button on your door panel and then it just starts massaging with, I guess, whatever was the last one. Yeah, so that's great that you do have a hard button for it. But it is weird that you can't just click it and it'll start doing it. Yeah, and then we have heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, all the things that you want in a fairly luxurious vehicle like this. But the heated and cooled seats are hard buttons and heated steering wheel, which is amazing. Usually Dodges and Chryslers and Jeeps hide that in the infotainment. Right, so we do have a bunch of hard buttons on this one, which is great. It is mostly gloss black, so I still don't really like that. All the covers are gloss black. This one doesn't have too many miles on it and it's already all scratched up. Yeah, but this is kind of like aiming to be a luxury version-ish. Right, if for, if for sure it is. Like, this interior is actually really nice. And before you drive, a couple more quick little things. We've got a nice 360 camera all the way around. However, you can't see your back wheels directly like a Kia Hyundai Genesis will. And I think a lot of other companies are adding that kind of stuff too. So I'm a little disappointed with that. But we also have a camera on the inside, which is your family cam. Yeah, fam cam. That's a cool feature. So what it, it's a little camera up there, and it lets you see all the seats. You can click on that to see which seat you want to highlight, and then you can see reverse facing seats and see babies in there as well, which I have been using on the Pacifica long-term tester that I've been using because it also has pretty much the exact same tech as this. And then to get to a lot of those things, you can either dig through the infotainment or you can swipe down from the top and then you've got a lot of your favorites that you can set there, which I think is really cool considering you have to go through the touchscreen. But now it's your turn to drive and we could probably talk about all like the nice materials and drive modes and- Sending it. Horsepowers and torques. Which I'm a little disappointed with launch control there's no, la there's no launch control I know but it actually brake boosted pretty well not bad once you brake boost it but like isn't there supposed to be a V8 model of this yes so we do have the V6 there is an optional V8 and without even driving that one I'm going to highly recommend that one because this is a very big vehicle and once you're on the highway it doesn't really have much passing power yeah 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 you need you need more power baby yeah you, you really do like Transmission responds pretty decently, but it's just, there's not much power to pull you along. And speaking about the transmission, we do have eight speed auto, it shifts relatively smoothly. It's not very quick, because you just downshift, 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 like it's not the fastest. So this is one you just definitely leave it in auto. And but we do have kind of funny paddles too. Yeah, yeah, the steering wheel's got the Chrysler buttons behind the steering wheel for your radio stuff, which is perfect. I love it in all my cars. They, they really prioritize the volume and yeah. the heating. The, the, the paddles are like the size of a potato chip that's been broken. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. But like you still hit it every time, right. so like whatever, but you kind of feel like there should be more paddle. All right, so let's uh, send this underpowered behemoth of a vehicle into Cliche Corner and I mean, not the worst. No, it's not the worst. Like it's actually pretty good. It's you, you notice the lack of power, but you also notice the suspension comfort because we do have air suspension and it is awesome on this car. I really like this air suspension and system. The amount you can raise and lower it, like you can get this thing so high, not too low. It's not like Alpina low, but you can get this so high. Yeah, and it's nice that it's adjustable. We do have a hard button to actually do that. And you can see it raising and lowering and it does work pretty quickly. Yeah, and this is trail rated. Yes, because this is the Overland. Yes, it's the Overland Overland. Edition. Overland, Overland. And it seems like from everyone else's videos and stuff that have already been posted, it is very capable off-road. Yeah. Plus it has the badge. The badge means 
Yeah, it's but it, it doesn't have a tent on the roof, so it's not really like an overlander. <laughs> and one of the things that stands out about this car is how easy it is to drive with the steering wheel because it's basically effortless. Like it's not, you know, effortless in comparison to a Rolls Royce. But for something like this, I would say it's kind of... Like Lincoln luxurious. Like Lincoln and even like... Um, this kind of reminds me of Land Rover, Range Rover. I feel like this is a good competitor for that. Yeah. This, didn't we call the other one, the Grand Cherokee, the American Range Rover in the title? Because that's very close to what this is and what that was. Maybe. I think so. And this is a 4x4. Yes, it is all-wheel drive, but we can go into four-wheel drive low as well. So you can actually take this off-road. And then we have a bunch of different drive modes. Sport, auto, snow, sand, mud, and rock. And a hill descent assist. Yeah, so everything you'd really need but i've just left this in auto okay how about materials and stuff inside very good i would say quite top notch especially for stellantis surprisingly nice for a jeep but i know jeeps are nice sometimes now right exactly i think they're they're trying to up market jeep especially with the wagoneer and the grand wagoneer that are coming and you do have a nice head-up display in here too yeah which is really nice and then we have pretty nice steering wheel buttons we do have adaptive cruise and link keep like we said earlier everything's pretty good in here yeah this this wood pattern that's even on the steering wheel too and on the sides is nice the way it all matches up the piano black you mentioned earlier yeah the piano of... black is my biggest criticism we do have a wireless charger and in terms of comfort these seats are really comfortable like very very comfortable yeah no issues with them at all and the massage is very good and then second row comfort is very good you can move them forward and back and then third row they say you can actually fit a adult comfortably i am an adult and i do fit comfortably back there you just gotta have your knees really bent exactly and if you fold down all the seats then we can probably get to the box test one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen get your own box on patreon.com slash the straight pipes so how about some other tests we've got a medium cup of coffee and it fits just fine i think a small would just fit yeah full pass and visors three two one yes great job perfect and people buying this type of Jeep probably care about towing, so they can tow up to 6,200 pounds with the V6. If you go up to the V8, you can tow like 1,000 pounds more or 2,000 pounds. And then something we don't talk about very often is sound systems. This has a Macintosh. <laughs> Macintosh? McIn Macintosh. We're not sure, but it never is a very this, good- Never heard of this brand before. No, but it's a very good system. Yeah, yeah, I really like it. And the speakers look cool and the font's kind of cool. Yeah, the font's like, <laughs> it's like yo, what's up? It, it, it's like, like Metallica, yeah. It's like Blink-182, what's the one after Blink-182? Like Good Charlotte or something? Oh. No, one of those? I, yeah, I can see that. So I feel like that's pretty much everything with this, besides going full off-roading, which we didn't do today. Yeah. Oh, peasant blockers in the back. Yes, we do. Peasant blockers in the back. And, and what about baby seats back there? Totally fits. Yeah, and I love having captain's chairs for baby back seat stuff. It's so much more convenient than benches, I think. True. Then you can kind of like move your leg over to the side. But then like your partner would be a distance apart from the baby. But they can like actually turn over and like look, it's, it's easier that way. Right, okay. You can slide that one seat up. All right. Let's get to the price. The Grand Cherokee L starts at $52,495. Canadian. And the one that we're driving is $80,265. A lot of money, but it is a premium vehicle and it definitely feels like it. Yeah, and it competes with the Ford Expedition, the Chevy Tahoe, and the Dodge Durango, which is also a Stellantis brand. Yeah, this feels more luxurious than all of those, 100%. I would agree with that. Um, do you think it's more luxurious than a Lincoln? I don't think so. I feel like... I like the interior more where the Lincoln may feel a little more like plasticky, like all their knobs are like chrome, but they're like... I think it all looks nicer and I also feel like it also drove better and it also had more power. In the Lincoln? Yeah, because that was the twin turbo, the EcoBoost. But then you get in that and you can't adjust your seat easily and then this is just like simple. Yeah, right? the perfect position. that Because that's makes... like kind of a nightmare sometimes. Yeah, you're right. And if you're shopping for a new Jeep Grand Cherokee and you live in the United States, click the True Car link below. There's a discount when using the Straight Pipes link. You can also shop for a used Jeep Grand Cherokee using True Car. And if you live in Canada, there's a Car Help Canada link below. So overall, I think they did a really good job with this brand new vehicle and it slots in well with its competition. Yeah, it's cool to see a luxury version of a Jeep, especially when there's just like straight up Wrangler versions of Jeeps and stuff. Exactly, we just have a couple little nitpicks on the interior and like, that's it, this is a really good car. Yeah, the infotainment. But I mean, we got that night. Yeah, yeah. Just like the best. So let us know what you guys think of this. Did they do a good enough job?